OK, this is Unit 2, Lesson 4, Second Semester Math. Uh, vocabulary review. A perfect square is a square of what kind of number? Who's got that? I think it might be 2. Well, 2 is a number that would, would give you a perfect square. OK, so you're on the right track. Yep. Is there a number division of that 2? Nope, not necessarily. One would be another number that would give you a perfect square, yep. So you said two would give you a perfect square. So for square four it's not, so it should be like three divided by three. Nope, nope. You guys are a little a bit Nope, not necessarily. It's a whole number. An integer. OK, we're going to backtrack to this here in a moment. An integer, um, a whole number. OK, simplify each square root. So most students memorize these square roots, but I want you guys to understand what's going on here. And it's important for what we're going to be seeing in a little bit, how to solve equations with exponents that have an exponent of 2. And you're going to learn how to solve other equations with other exponents. So uh, gentlemen in the back, you can start. So who knows the answer to number two? Jaden. The answer is two. Let me show you why it's two. And then I, I want you guys to get this in your minds for how to solve an equation with an exponent. So let me rewrite this square root. So. 4 is the same as 2 raised to the second power. Now, what happens is the second power and the square root, they're like opposites. They make each other go away. Does that make sense? So my answer is just going to be 2. Okay. For number 3, what's the square root of 16? Banks. It is 4, right? <coughs> So if I rewrote square root of 16, I could think about it this way. It's the same as 4 to the second power. And the square root and the second power, they cancel each other out. They're like opposites. They make each other go away. So what I get back is not 2, is 4, just like Charles said. So now that you've seen a couple examples, can somebody tell me what the square root of 36 is? Somebody I haven't heard from. What's the square root of 36? No, nope. 12 to the third power would be 12 times 12 times 12. Oh. We're looking for second powers. Cruise in the back. Um, 8 to the second power is not 36. Gabby? Gabby's correct, 6. So I can rewrite 36 as a 6 to the second power, right? Isn't 6 times 6 36? So I can rewrite 6 to the second power. And then we see that the exponent 2 and the square root of 2, those two things cancel each other out. So square root of 36 is just 6. Now, who can tell me the square root of 49? I need a volunteer. Bryce, yes. Seven. Nice. Because 49 is the same as 7 to the second power. Isn't 7 times 7 49? So 7 to the second power, if I take the square root of 7 to the second power, then I just get back 7. OK. So we're going to be working a little bit more with exponents in the next couple lessons. Um, we're going to start working with exponents in this lesson. Let's go ahead and continue with the lesson for the day. I'm going to go ahead and read this since I'm putting this on the YouTube channel. What you'll learn. To find the circumference area, the circumference and area of a circle. Okay. New vocabulary, circumference and pi. 
Why learn this? If you know how to find the circumference of a circle, you can find how far you must travel to move all the way around the circle. Do you guys remember when I said, um, when I explained finding the perimeter of the classroom? We were walking around the walls of the, cl of the cl classroom to figure out what the perimeter would be. And you had to do a full lap for that to be the distance around, right? Well, for a circle, we don't say perimeter of a circle. There's a special word for perimeter of a circle. It is the circumference of the circle. Does that make sense? So if you were to define the circumference, the word circumference, it is the perimeter of a circle. Does that make sense? It's the distance around a circle. Are we good? Now, um, who remembers this word from social studies? Circumnavigate. You guys remember this from? Circumnavigate. I saw a couple hands go up. Do you guys remember reading about somebody who circumnavigated something? What, what were they doing? Nobody remembers that? S to circumnavigate? Has to do with sailing. Somebody circumnavigated what? He didn't, he didn't circumnavigate. Who said it? I heard it. In the back? It means to navigate a path around the earth. To cir circumnavigate. You're sailing around the earth, and you're make, basically making a lap around the earth. Does that make sense? OK, so circumference. I'm just trying to get you to connect some words with some um, vocabulary you might have heard in another class. All right, why learn this? If you know how to find the circumference of a circle, you can find how far you must travel to move all the way around the circle. So let me give you an example. If I had a disc, and I wrapped a rope around it, and I, I made a piece of rope that wrapped all the way around the disc, and it met from one end of the rope to the other end, if I stretch that rope out, that's the circumference of that disc. Does that make sense? If I took a disc, you guys know what a disc is, right? Mm -hmm. it, could be, it could be any size, right, depending on whatever the diameter is. And if I took a piece of string around that disc, and I made it go from one end of the string, and I wrapped it all the way to the other end, right? If I stretch that string out, that's the distance around the disc, right? Right? That's called the circumference. Or if I took that disc, and I put it on a table, and I marked one start of it, and I, I rolled the disc so that where I started to roll the disc, it would return to that place, that would be the circumference. If you take a look, they give an example of this right here with the, the, um, the dollar coin. In the picture below, a Sacagawea dollar rolls along a surface. The distance the dollar rolls is the same as the distance around the edge of the dollar. This distance is the coin's circumference. Circumference, C, is the distance around a circle. So if we were to take this coin and roll it one full rotation, do you see where it starts? The head's straight up. You see how the head's facing up? If you let it roll one full rotation so that it's facing up again, that distance that it rolled is the circumference. If I was to take a piece of string and wrap it around the edge of the circle so that one end of the street string meets the other end, and I stretch it out, it'd be the same as the distance traveled by that coin. Does that make sense? OK. So it's, circumference is the distance around the circle. Pi. Pi is the ratio of the circle's circumference. Now, if you think about this, if you have if you have something that's got a larger diameter, does it make sense that it has a larger circumference? Does that make sense? If the diameter, remember what what is diameter? Who can explain that? Robert. It's the width of the circle, right? OK. It's the line segment that goes from uh, the circle through the center to the other side of the circle, right? If the diameter gets larger, doesn't it make sense that the circumference is larger? Right? OK. Well, somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody figured out the value for pi. And they said, hey, I could figure out the distance around any circle if I multiply it to this number pi. Now, there's two formulas for a circumference. Let's take a look at this. 
So pi is the ratio of a circle's per circumference. Circumference is its diameter d. Circumference to its diameter d. Use the symbol pi for the ratio. So if we look at this, pi is the circumference divided by diameter. Or we can use a formula below. The formula for circumference comes from this ratio. So here, let's take a look at the key concept for the day. Circumference of a circle. The circumference c of a circle is pi times the diameter d. Now, if you look, we have two formulas. Do you guys see my two formulas? One is c circumference equals pi times diameter. The other is c equals pi, 2 times pi times the radius. Are these the same formula? How are they the same? What makes them the same? Joel? Nice. Did you guys hear what Joel just said? He said exactly what I was hoping he would say. If you take 2 times the radius, that is going to equal the diameter. Do you guys understand why these two are the same? Now, here's how they're going to trick you in Conexus or a standardized test. They're going to hope that you forget that. They're going to hope that instead of putting in the diameter, you substitute the radius and you mix up these formulas. Okay? So we're going to practice a couple so we don't make those mistakes. So for pi, pi is a number that is non-terminating and is non-repeating. It's a decimal. Okay? That's very different than what we learned earlier this year, rational numbers. Rational numbers were repeating numbers, repeating decimals. And we could write repeating decimals as what? Does anyone remember? We can write them as what? Repeating decimals we could write as what? Like, so 0.333, I could write that another way. A fraction, you said it. So what would 0.3333 repeating be if I wrote that as a fraction? Nope, that's a whole number. Well, you're, you're showing me how you'd represent the repeating decimal. How would I write it as a fraction that's equal to the decimal that repeats? I think I heard it. One thirds. One over three. I said I heard it said. It might have been you, might have not have been you. So one third, if I were to divide one thirds out, I'd have a repeating decimal, it'd be 0 0.33333 repeating. Right? There are some other repeating decimals that you can write as a fraction. Those are called rational numbers. So any number that you can write as a fraction is a rational number. Okay? Some rationals do not terminate, they repeat. But what about decimal numbers that don't terminate but don't repeat? They are called, get this, irrational numbers. And the reason why they're irrational numbers is you can never write that number. Every number that you write is an estimate of that number because that number has no end to it. If you were to write the number out, you would never finish writing the number, because it keeps going and going and going forever. And it never repeats. There's no pattern to it. Does that make sense? It's like negative and negative. Sort of. I guess you can make that connection. So irrational and rational. Rational, you can write it as a fraction, something that, a number that represents that, that, that amount. Okay. Irrational numbers, we can't, we can't write a number to represent an irrational number because every number we write is going to be an estimate. It's going to be cutting off some of the numbers. Let me give you an example. Both 22 sevenths and 3 and 14 hundredths, they are approximations of pi. Remember, pi goes on forever, right? So we're not going to write a decimal that goes on forever. We're going to get an estimate for pi. And so the most common estimate for pi is 3 and 14 hundredths. It goes, there are many more digits after the 4. Got it? For what we're doing in our class, we're just going to use that number to estimate pi. Got it? So when we substitute into the formula, whatever the formula is that has pi, we're going to use 3 and 14 hundredths. Got it? OK. Now, because we're not using the exact value of pi, everything that we calculate with 3 and 14 hundredths is just going to be an estimate, an approximation. So. We're going to estimate the area of, um, we're going to find the circumference of a circle. So here's some examples. Let me go ahead and delete this. It shouldn't be here. 
find the circumference of a circle. So we have two examples here. You're going to use these two formulas. Now, pay attention to what Joel said earlier. Those formulas are the same, right? Because twice the radius is equal to the diameter. So what I need you guys to do is I need you to calculate the circumference for this circle on the left and the circumference for this circle on the right. And when you're done, if you could put your pencils down. And I'm very pleased to see that almost every single one of you, almost, there's a couple of you guys I wish you'd kind of get on board with the program. Most everybody in here is trying. Good. We have a quiz on this on Thursday. Who can walk me through the first example? Even if you don't have the calculation yet, we'll walk us through it. Who can walk me through it? Tata. Nice. So we have my circumference. And we know that for pi, we're not going to use the actual number for pi, because we can't do that. We use an approximate value for pi. And you said it was 3.14, or th 3 and 14 hundredths. And we're going to multiply that by 13. And that was what? What is the value of 13 that they give us here? It's 13 meters. But what do we call this? It goes all the way across the circle. That is the diameter, right? And so. We're given the measurement for the diameter. So we're going to multiply by 13 meters to 3 and 1 4, or 3 and 14 hundredths. And what do you get back? OK. Let's verify our work. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this. So 4 times 3 was what? 12. 12. Carry the 1. 3 times 1 plus the 1, 4. Good. And then 3 times 3? Nine. 9. And then before we can continue, what do I have to do? I have to put a 0 here, right? And so let's continue multiplying. What's 1 times 4? Four? 4. 1 times 1? One. 1 times 3? Three. 3. Very good. And we're going to go ahead and... Give us some more room over here. We're going to find the sum of these two things. So 2 and 0, 2. two. 4 and 4, nine and, zero, 9 and 1, 10. Carry the 1, 3 and 1, 4. And where does my decimal go? Between the 0 and the 8. Very good. And then, so this ends up being meters, right? So. Our calculation for circumference, 42 meters. But what did the question ask us to do? Did it ask us to round? Nope. So we have 40 and 82 hundredths meters. Do you have a question? Yeah, good. Um, where's your sign-out sheet? We'll do that in a little bit. OK. So for this one right here, pretty, pretty easy. Good job, Tata. Who's got this one? There's a sh this one you can, you can do mentally. Who was able to mentally solve this one? Miranda. So you had 2, you rewrote it 2r, and then you had pi. And what did you use for pi again? Um, 3.14. OK, so we are multiplying this. But 
2 times the radius r, what's the radius? 5 feet. So you saw that 2 times 5 feet and then times 3 and 14 hundredths. You saw that 2 times 5 gave you 10, 10 feet. And then that's pretty easy because we know if we multiply by a power 10, what are you really doing? Nice, I'm just going to move my decimal. So let's go ahead and move our decimal. How many places? One, two, three, All right, so what's, what's this end up being? What's the distance around this circle going to be? 31. It's about 31 and 4 tenths feet. OK? And this is just an approximation because we're not using the ex exact value of pi, right? OK, so let's go ahead. We're going to find the circumference of the circle to the right. This time, we're going to round to the nearest tenths. What did they give us here in the circle? They gave us a value. What is that value, Michaela? What is that? Right, so Michaela correctly identified the distance they gave us, 9 meters, is the diameter. So the diameter equals 9 meters. And do you remember the formula for circumference? What is it? Nice, so circumference equals pi times diameter or diameter times pi, because the order doesn't matter. It's commutative. You can move the order around. And so you already told me diameter is 9 meters. And we're multiplying by the value of pi. What is the value of pi that we're going to substitute? The approximate value of pi is 3 and 14 hundredths. OK, and now we're going to multiply that. But they want us to round this to nearest 10, so we got to be careful. So. times 9. And the class this morning forgot a little bit about rounding, so I want to make sure I, I review that with you. 9 times 4 is what? 36. 36. Carry the 3. 9 times 1 nine. plus the 3? 12. 12. Carry the 1. 9 times 3 27. plus the 1? 28. OK, and can you tell me where my decimal is supposed to be? This Between this 8 and 2? between this 8 and 2? Very good. And how do you know where to put the decimal? Because um, in 3 and 1400, it's Right, it's two places in. And where's the place for the 9? Um, at, the at the end. So we have two places here. We have no places here. When we add that up, we got to move it in two places. So we got one, two places. But that's not my answer, right? The answer says round to the nearest tenth place, OK? So when I round to the nearest tenths place, what is my answer end up being? Very good. 28 and 3 tenths. And what are my units? Meters. OK. And this is just an estimate. So I should put that. Are we good? Any questions? Now, next thing we need to talk about, we're going to talk about the area. And what do you notice about the area formula for a circle? Oh, it is similar, right? Nice, there's an exponent. And remember when we were talking about area, what do we usually talk about? 
What kind of units? We're talking about units squared, right? OK, so for circumference, we didn't have square units, right? It was just the distance. Oh, I did? What was my mistake? Thousands. What are we talking about? Oh, there should be a zero there? No, no, you no, she was correct. Look, you look at the tenths place. Do you see this um, that my decimal here? Okay. I gotta look one place over to the hundredths place. And I gotta say, is it five and up? If it is, I gotta bump the tenths place up. If it's four and below, I just drop everything and leave the tenths place like it is. Okay? Are we good? We're gonna be seeing that really soon on the park. So let's try to get that. That's like an easy thing. We just gotta make sure it's fresh in our mind, we know how to do it. Are we good? Any question about rounding? It's OK. The first period I was having, we're fuzzy on it, too. All right. So the next key concept, area of a circle. The area of a circle is the product of pi and the radius. But if you notice, radius is raised to what exponent? Two. Two so it's the second power. So we're going to have square units. And as, I, as we calculated earlier, when we're talking about area, we're always going to have square units. Okay? When we're talking about a length, a distance, it's just whatever the unit length is. But if we're talking about area, we're talking about how many square units fit in that shape. So finding the area of a circle. So let me go ahead and take this formula over here so we have it. Here's my formula. A standard circus ring has a diameter of 13 meters. What is the area of the ring? Round to the nearest tenths. Do you see how they're trying to set you up right now? They're trying to trick you right now. They're talking about the circus ring. And what did I got it. You can just click save. What, what value are they giving me? I heard it. Who said it? Robert, go ahead. Okay, we're going to divide 13 by 2. Why are we dividing 13 by 2? Because the formula gives us radius, right? Do you guys understand? Even though I'm trying to emphasize this right now, I'm, I'm, I promise you, I always see students to mess up on that. So I'm trying to get you to be aware of that. So can you guys go and work this out now? Robert gave you like the key to this question. Turn in your scratch paper, and then I need you to follow along when he returns. What's that? Um, let's go ahead and replace with my formula. No, no. No, you're thinking of circumference, right? But remember, for circumference, there is a formula for diameter with diameter, and there's a formula with radius. But for area, there's only this formula with radius, right? But you can, you can replace r with what diameter is, right? Because we know the relationship between radius and diameter. What's the relationship? Just what Robert just said. If I know the radius, can I find the diameter? How? No, diameter. There isn't twice the diameter is not the radius. You've got something messed up a little bit. No, you're right. You're about to say divided by two. So, Robert, can you tell the class what is the radius for this going to be? What's the radius of the circus ring? Six and five tenths, right? Because the diameter is the distance all the way across. Radius is halfway across, right? It's from the center to the to the to the circle. The diameter is from the circle through the center to the other side of the circle. So you had to first understand what diameter is. If the diameter equals 13, then the radius equals 6 and 5 tenths. Do you understand? Now, pi 
What's the number we're going to use for pi? It's the same pi, the same number we substituted earlier. What happens when I have things right next to each other like that? What's that mean? Multiply. OK, so let's go ahead and replace pi. What are we going to use for pi? OK, we're going to approximate the value of pi. We're going to use 3 and 14 hundredths. And now I've got to multiply by my radius, right? And what is my radius? What is radius? 6. 0.5 meters squared. So do you guys remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally? Please, well, there's nothing in the parentheses we can simplify. Excuse, we have an exponent, right? Mm -hmm. So what do I have to do with the exponent? How do I simplify the exponent? What's second power mean? You times it by right. We're going to times it by itself. 6.5 times 6.5, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to square 6.5. So 6.5 squared is 6.5 times 6.5. So that's what you need to figure out first. Let's go ahead and calculate that. What's 5 times 5? 25. 25. Carry the 2, not 5 plus 5, 5 times 5. Some of you guys are laughing. It's OK. We make mistakes. It's, we had a long weekend, so let's just chill out. 6 times 5 is what? 30 plus the 2? 32. Now, before I multiply the next digit, what do I have to do? I need a placeholder, right? So now 6 times 5 is what? 30. Carry my 3. And then 6 times 6? 36 plus the 3? 39. OK, now we're going to go ahead and add all this up. Let's add all this up. So we got 5 and 0, 2 and 0, 9 and 3, carry the 1. Now where's my decimal go? Between the two twos, very good. So now we can, we can write this 6 and 5 tenths meters to the second power. It becomes what? 14, well, what about the units? What do the units become? Meters. Right? Because not only did I multiply 6.5 times 6.5, I multiply meters times meters, and meters times meters, and meters squared. So I have over here 42 and 25 hundredths meters squared. So now you see why the units are going to be meters squared. And we're going to multiply that by. this. And so we're almost done. We need to multiply that now to get our final answer. So I'm going to put this off to the side. But now I've got to multiply something else. We'll just ignore this meter squared for a minute while we multiply these digits out. So 4 times 5, what's that going to be? Carry the 2. 4 times 2, 8 plus the 2. Carry the 1. 4 times 2 plus the 1, 9. And then 4 times 4, 16. OK, before I multiply the 1, what do I have to do? i got to add a 0. Now, um, 1 times 5, 1 times 2, 1 times 2 again, 1 times 4, good. Now, before I multiply the 3, what do I have to do? Nice. Somebody in the last class said one, add 1, 0. And so we had to clarify that. No, as you continue on, you add an extra 0. So here I got to add two zeros now. So 3 times 5, 15. So I'm going to carry the 1. 3 times 2, 6 plus the 1. 3 times 2 again, 6. And then 3 times the 4, 12. Okay. 
So now let's go ahead and take the sum of all this, and then we'll know. Uh, we have to round the nearest tenths, too. So let's go ahead and bring down my zeros. 5, 0, and 0 is 9, 2, and 5. 16, carry the 1. 6, 1, 2, and 7. 16, I heard it good. So carry the 1 again. 6, 4, 1, and 1. 12, and then carry the 1 again. 2 and 1, 3, and then 1. Now where's my decimal going to be at? Between the 2 and the 6, because how many places do we need to move it? 4. 4, nice. Now it wants us to round this to the nearest what? Nearest tenths place, right? So if I round this to the nearest tenths place, what would it be? 132 and 7 tenths meters squared is approximately the area. Okay, let me go ahead and shrink this down. Okay, next problem. I need you guys to work this out on your own. Here you go. Find the area of the circle. Guess what? What are they giving me this time? So in the last problem, there's an extra step, right? You had to convert radius for a diameter to radius. Now they're just giving you the radius. No, because it's already radius. The last time they gave me diameter. So look at the previous problem, Alexis. They gave me the diameter, right? The distance all the way across. Here, they're giving me the distance halfway across. OK. You want to walk me through it? So what do I replace for pi? What's the value for pi that we're going to use instead of the actual value of pi? 3 and 14 hundredths. Very good. OK. And then they gave us the radius this time, right? That is equal to the radius. Radius equals 12 meters, OK? But the formula says pi times the radius squared. So what's radius squared mean? What's, the squ what's it mean to square something? Right, and what's, what, what happens when we raise something to the second power? What are we really doing? Well, you multiply it to itself, right? So we have 12 meters, and all that is raised to the second power. So we need to simplify 12 meters to the second power. What's 12 meters to the second power? Very good. So most of you guys know your times table. That's 144 meters. What's the unit? Squared, because you have meters times meters and 12 times 12. OK, so now we got to multiply 144 meters squared times 3 and 14 hundredths. So let's go ahead and do that. OK, walk me through this. Is this did you multiply it this way? OK. So what's 4 times 4 is what? 16. Very good. Carry my 1. 4 times 1 plus the 1. Very good. And then 4 times 3? 12, so I got 12. Now before I multiply the next 4, what do I have to do? I got to put a placeholder in there, 0. And then we're multiplying the same digit again to the same set of digits. So it's just going to be the same set of digits, 6, 5, 2, and 1. And now before I multiply the 1, what do I have to do? I got to put two zeros there. 
And that's pretty easy because we know how to multiply 1 times anything. This is the same thing. So 1 times 4 is 4, and then 1, and then 3. And then the last step is take the sum of these digits, and then we got to put our decimal into the place. So 6 and all these zeros ends up being what? What do we have here? 6, and then 5 and 6, and 0. 11, carry the 1. 5, 2, 1, and 4. 12, carry the 1 again. 5, very good. And then over here, 4. Now, where's my decimal supposed to be at? Between the 2 and 1. Very good. We move it two places. Now, um, this is going to be meters squared, right? And then we have to round, don't we? It told us to round to the nearest square unit. So what are they saying? Round to the nearest square unit. What are they really telling you to do? Did they tell you a place? They wanted you to round to the nearest. Unit, unicycle means what? How many wheels on a unicycle? One. They're, they're trying to get you to round to the nearest ones place. So I have to look at the ones place. What's in the ones place? No. What's in the ones place? Two is in the ones place, right? We have to look over to the right one place. And then we have to decide if we bump it up or let it flow. So what are we going to do, bump it up or let it flow? Let it flow. Right, we're going to let it flow. Why do we let it flow? Because uh, one is less than five. It's four on, four on below, let it flow. So my answer, my approximate answer for the area is going to be 452 meters squared is my approximate value for area. Okay. So today we learned how to do two things. We learned how to find the distance around a circle, the perimeter of a circle. But we don't say perimeter of a circle. What do we say? What's the word? The circumference. And then we also found what? The area, the area of a circle. So we, know, we want to know how many square units will fill up that circle. So to close, is it possible to write an exact value of pi as a decimal? Is it? No. Why not? It's, I heard it, I heard somebody say non-ending, but we like to say non-terminating. And then non-repeating, non-repeating. Very good. And we call this an irrational number. OK? Now, take a look at these triples. We have triples here. And these triples, we have to identify which one is the radius, which one's the diameter, and which one's the circumference. OK, let's really quickly say, what is the circumference each equal to? Circumference equals what? There's two formulas, right? Um, no, you're thinking about area. Oh. Circumference equals what? Um, pi, times the diameter. pi times the diameter, or the diameter times pi, right? And, the one and then what's the other way? It's 2 times the radius times pi, right? OK, so here's what I want you guys to do. We, want to, we have to identify the circumference, we have to identify the diameter, and then we also need to identify which one's the radius. And so these are the values once they've simplified to be, they're one of these three. So take a look at this first one. Which one would be the radius? Which one would be my circumference? Which one's my diameter for the first example? What would one be? One would be the radius. Very good. And why would you say that that was the radius? Right, because it's half of 2. So what is 2 pi? The circumference, because the circumference is the diameter times pi, right? And you just told me the diameter is twice the radius. Twice 1 is going to be 2, so my diameter is going to be 2. You guys see what we're doing now? 
Okay. Now, what about this next one? Can somebody tell me what 4 pi is? What's 4 pi? Very good. It's the circumference. Okay. And then what would 4 be? The diameter. Very good. And then what would 2 be? 2 is the radius. Okay. Next set of digits. What would 7 be? Jaden. 7 is the diameter. Very good. What's 3 and 5 tenths, Jaden? That is the radius. Very good. And then what is 22 going to be? That is a, a, that's approximately the circumference. OK, now this one's kind of tricky, but I'm hoping you guys see what's going on. Two divided by pi is what? No, don't tell me the number. I want you to look at these, the relation between these numbers. What is that going to be? I heard it. It's, it's either the diameter, the radius, or the circumference. Which one is? It's the diameter. Why did you say that 2 over pi is the diameter? Because what's the relation between the diameter and the radius? It's always what? It's always half, or the diameter is double the radius, right? So do we see something that's double another item in this set? Yeah. This is double what? 2 over pi is double what? 1 over pi. So my radius is 1 over pi. That's my radius. And so what's the last thing have to be? The last thing has got to be the circumference. Now, I want to show you something. If my diameter is 2 over pi, what happens? What happens to the formula? Take a look over here. I'm going to substitute. There's a reason why I wrote this formula down over here. So here's my formula, right? And I'm going to move this one above, right? So watch. I'm going to replace diameter with pi over 2, or 2 over pi. And then I have to multiply by pi, right? But I'm going to make pi into a fraction, pi over 1. Isn't that the same thing? So now you're going to start to see how some of what we've learned in the past applies. What's this end up being when I multiply these two fractions? What's, what's the numerator going to be? Very good. Michaela has it. It's 2 pi. And then what is the denominator going to be? It's just going to be pi. But what happens when I have pi in the numerator and pi in the denominator? They cancel each other out. So then what I end up with, I just end up with 2, right? Because you guys see right here, these pi's go away. Do you guys understand what's going on with this last problem? Okay. Did somebody have a question? Question?